child support in Pennsylvania is a very vital source of financial contribution for a child. And a party that may file for child support is the person that has custody of the child. Um, so in some situations, that may be the parent. In other situations, it could be a grandparent. It could be the welfare agency. Um, anybody who has the child is the person entitled. So they are filing against a parent or both parties. Uh, that's who obligated to pay child support. So if you have a child support order, um, it's going to be the obligation of a parent, not a grandparent. Even if a grandparent has filed for custody and has partial custody, they have no obligation to pay for child support. So we're only looking at the parents. And in Pennsylvania, the courts look at the net income of the parents. And it's from all sources of income. So, um, you know, that includes earned income as well as if there's any type of uh, dividend income, lottery income, overtime income from a second job income. Um, so if you have multiple jobs thinking that that's going to help you pay your child support, the income from that second or third job is going to be included when calculating your obligations. So keep that in mind. Um, you don't have an obligation to work more than one job, 40 hours, but they will include those additional sources of income when figuring out what your net income is. Um, there are guidelines that are used in Pennsylvania based on household income. And that's why your child support order for one child may be very different than the amount that your neighbor gets if your neighbor's household income is much different than yours. Um, they are looking at the party's income, not your spouse or, you know, the new significant other. They're looking at the parent income. So that means your income. And then they're looking at the party that's paying their income. So even if you're divorced and your spouse has married someone very wealthy, that income is not going to factor in in your child support amount. The, in addition to receiving a basic child support amount, which is going to be based on the guidelines for the most part, unless you're in a very high income bracket, the court is also going to add on to child support the additional cost of, you know, if you have camp or you have um, tuition and both parties have agreed that the child or children go to private school and other expenses like activities like baseball or whatever will be allocated in proportion to the incomes. If one of the parents is paying for health insurance, that parent is entitled to a credit because both parties are liable to pay towards that expense. So if you are the party that's receiving child support, then it will be added onto your order. And if you're the party that is paying the health insurance and you're paying child support, you will have some type of deduction on your support order for paying that expense. So usually when you're going to a support conference for the first time, you're gonna be asked to bring six months of pay subs. But in practice, you really just need the most recent pay stub that shows all of the income that you have accumulated during the year, as well as any bonus income. And if you have an employment agreement and you receive a bonus, you're going to want to bring that as well to show what month you get the bonus in, because the bonus must be considered. Um, in addition to that, any time that there's a change in an income, the order can modify. So if you were to lose your job, or if you get a new job with more money, you need to report that, but you must file with the court if you expect a change. Child support is not going to be entered until the two of you live in separate homes. And it's not going to be entered if you don't file for it. The obligation is normally retroactive to the date the complaint is filed. And that's why it's very important that if you know you're going to be living separately, that you get the child support filed so that you can start getting money close in time to when one of the parties is moving out. Um, and so it's very simple to apply for child support in Pennsylvania. There is no filing fee. You can hire an attorney to file for you, but you can also obtain the forms from your local domestic relations office. And in some instances, you can find the forms online. Um, 
whatever date that you fill it out and file it with the court, that will be your retroactive date. But you may be waiting five, six, up to eight weeks before you actually go to court from the date that you file. So you might not have any money coming in for those five, six, or eight weeks during that time. The obligation of the parent that pays will be retroactive to when you file, but they will be given time to pay off the past due amount until they get the court. The court charges on the first of every month. So whatever, you know, from the date of filing, um, the date you get the court, it's going to go into an arrearage account and they're going to be ordered to pay that off, but it's only going to be a percentage. It's a percentage of the monthly order, usually 20%, but it could be less if agreed. So for example, if when you get the court, you should have already paid $1,000 and you haven't paid anything. The court, if they enter a monthly order for you, will take 20% of that monthly order and have you start paying down that $1,000. Keep in mind that the arrearages that are on a support order are also going to be reported to the credit bureau and intercepted if you receive any source of money. So if you're expecting a tax refund and you have passed through child support, even if it was just a rearage from the initial order, the court will garnish that money before you get your refund and it will pay off your child support. The same thing if you try to sell real estate, there's an obligation to check for child support and that will also get paid off before you get your proceeds. So keep that in mind and make sure that you're timely paying. You need to make sure your payments are going in within the 30 days you look for the wage attachment to make sure that your payments are wage attached. And if you're self-employed, you need to physically send it in to Harrisburg in order to get credit for the payment. 